of our staff called the police on us. So whoever the f you are, I'm just real. What can I tell you? That's just how I feel about it. And uh, again, the two of you, get out. The CEO you just saw is Joy Jindusa. She owns Postcard Mania and recently was called out for trying to get her employees to come to the office to work through Hurricane Ian, inviting everyone to bring their children, their pets, and that they'll make it fun for everyone at the office because she was convinced it was going to be a nothing burger. Now that all happened over a Zoom call. The footage of that Zoom call was leaked, but only to news agencies. However, I have the transcript from that Zoom call and I want to read it to you. So on September 26th, she joined a company-wide office Zoom call from her phone in the car while everyone else is at the office. She starts off and says, hi guys, can you hear me? Say hi to Danny, we're driving. Here's the deal, I guess the hurricane is coming. I've lived in this area for 33 years now and the media always makes it a lot worse than it's ever been. Obviously we have to plan for a disaster and hope for a nothing burger, which every single time we plan for a disaster, it's always a nothing burger. Okay, hold on, let me show you some footage of Hurricane Ian being a nothing burger. If you're new to town and you're like, oh no, it's a hurricane, it's not going to be that bad. I promise. But there are evacuation areas. Even Zach's apartment is an evacuation apartment, and he's up a giant hill from the water. Anyways, bring your pets, bring your kids, bring everyone to Postcard Mania, and Jason can start blowing up those air mattresses if we need to. Been there, done that, it's going to be fine. Then she says, obviously, you feeling safe and comfortable is of the utmost importance, but I honestly want to continue to deliver. Okay, so let's just pause. Is of the utmost importance. But, you can't say that and then go, but I still want to continue working. Raise your hand if you're scared of the hurricane. So this is on a Zoom call. Everyone has their video open. Would you raise your hand to say, I'm afraid of the hurricane. I don't want to come to work. If your livelihood is at stake, come on. We all know how this works in the corporate world. You're not going to be like, uh... Me, it's really not going to be that scary. But if you're scared, I understand. I also understand why you're not raising your hand. And it's not because of their livelihoods being at stake at their, at their company. It's because, it's because she said it's going to be nothing. Bye, guys. Wave at me. Oh, you're so nice for waving. Those of you that did, love you. Bye. What a weird way to end a call as a CEO. After that, there were some text messages that were leaked from the CEO. PCM was billed to withstand Category 5 wins. We would like to continue to service our national clients if we can. Bring your kids to work on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. No. We will have movies and fun for them. No. I've lived here for over 30 years. There's always more hype in the media than any storm that has ever hit here. Postcard Mania is the best place to be. It's super strong. Bring your pets if you feel the need. I doubt in the end you will really need to. We are not closing. We are working. Now, in the days since Postcard Mania came under fire, Joy has apologized for her communications to her employees while maintaining that the company's preparation for the hurricane prioritized company safety, though. But she did end up closing the company for two days, and she gave everyone two days PTO which was the right thing to do and probably what you should have done from the beginning instead of waiting for this to go viral because an anonymous employee said that it was public pressure following this post going viral that made the company decide to shut down for the hurricane. Since the story dropped on September 27th, I figured I'd take a look and see what happened to Glassdoor, check for any review bombs, you know. But what I noticed was that the company seemed to be review bombed but only by five-star reviews. Now, when I did find some low reviews at the company, they all had something in common. They claim the business is heavily influenced by Scientology and they have courses you're required to take if you want to progress forward. Now, I know you guys came for the corporate cringe, but after I found out about this, I just started going down the rabbit hole and it turns out this place is like a hot spot and the CEO is one of the top Scientologists there is. So here you can see the entire list of Scientology courses that the CEO, Joy, has taken. And if we come down to the bottom, you can see that she's actually max rank Scientology. I don't know if that's like celebrity level up there with Tom Cruise or John Travolta, but we'll get into it. Stick with me. Free conversion therapy. Scientology practices are methodically woven into the job training and is mandatory in order to get higher up in the company. I watched two people stare at each other for an hour straight without breaking their sight. Absolutely absurd. Look elsewhere. Required Scientology management training in order to move up in the company. They'll say it's not Scientology stuff, but it is. When I came in for an interview, a mother of one of the employees that was dropping off her mail said to me, get ready, they're all Scientologists here. I know they're not all Scientologists, but I should have listened. Scientology indoctrination. They love to advertise themselves as a laid back fun company, but it's very clicky and a stressful environment to be in if you're not part of the group. And by group, I mean a Scientologist. Taking L. Ron Hubbard courses is a requirement. Scientologist factory loomed with office politics. An extremely heavy load of training coursework loomed with Ron Hubbard's Scientologist teachings, philosophies. It feels very odd and cult-like. They make you read a book that the owner wrote and have a classroom dedicated to it. 
which you have to do if you want to get promotions or even work there. It feels odd. So after that, I started reading the HR responses. But the HR responses to these Glassdoor reviews weren't your typical thank you for your input, we'll work on this, that. They were very snarky. There is zero talk about Scientology here, and it is never pushed. I'm not sure what you mean by promote Scientology. We are a workplace and we promote marketing services to our clients. We don't promote any religions of any kind ever. A company can get into serious trouble by promoting religion for a good reason. Now, guys, uh, listen, I've watched tons of Scientology documentaries. And when you see these people try to defend themselves and gaslight. This is the way the church deals with scrutiny. You're committing suppressive acts. Intimidation, vilification and cameras are part of their well-practiced routine, still in the early stages of our story and too soon to ask for official comment, we earned this angry attack. Church. Coming here and making it seem dark and mysterious. Are you gonna do like another piece? I heard about when you kidnapped those two children. Is this gonna <laughs> be another thing? Is that how? You're gonna do this? Are you that dishonest? Dude, reading these responses, it looks just like the, the Scientology people in those movies. It's nuts, but anyways, maybe you're saying this because our owner is a Scientologist. It's like saying that Chick-fil-A is promoting religion because they don't work on Sundays. And then the HR person says, I don't personally care what religion of my CEO, what do you mean your CEO? My C, do you, does she own you? Are you owned by her? This is weird. And then the last one they responded to is, we don't do Scientology here. We produce and sell marketing. So again and again, the same copy paste answer. Our owner has chosen to use organizational advice from L. Ron Hubbard. Now this is one of the only HR responses where they admit that they do in fact take L. Ron Hubbard uh, material and push that into their company for people to read. This advice is regarding how to run the organization, the use of graphs and statistics to closely monitor production in the company, how to manage people using kindness and friendliness, how to find the exact right cause of things in order to fix them and help our company expand and grow. In fact, she also uses advice on how to market her company in order to grow and we have hit our best year ever. So they do admit that they push L. Ron Hubbard courses inside of their company, just not in the religious way, but it's Scientology, so come on. Now, I found this website as I was researching Searching called TonyOrtega.org. Longtime critic of the church, Tony Ortega. There are a whole bunch of articles about the CEO. Apparently, she was on the front page of Freedom Magazine, which has been basically labeled as Scientology propaganda. Here it is right here, Postcard Mania and Business Boom, Joy Jinjuza. She moved to Clearwater 25 years ago to study Scientology. All of her business acumen is self-taught. And the source for where she learned how to run this business is a 12-volume series about management from the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. The CEO told the magazine, I studied a lot of Mr. Hubbard's writings on administration and management where I learned things and then applied them in practical ways to my life and secularly to my business. Funny how they go, and secularly, okay? It's not, it's not the same sort of... Now, I thought this part in the article was particularly hypocritical. The CEO is a strong critic of any kind of discrimination, something she attributes to her Jewish background. However, she says she does like it when she has the opportunity to hire people who practice a religion, any religion, does that not sound like discrimination? Like you really enjoy hiring people who are religious as opposed to what? She says, people who practice a religion, I find, work toward a higher goal and have less concern for just their own sense of self. They're more inclined to work for the common good, which is obviously what all CEOs want. They don't want people working for themselves and thinking about themselves. It's about the higher power, work for something else, work for the divine. Another fun fact about Joy Jindusa here is that she's actually on the front page of Scientology's website, Scientology.tv. In these quotes, it says, there is a very, very specific technology in Scientology that I, I used, used to change my condition completely. What special technology are you using? Is that because we haven't paid for the courses yet? As you level up through Scientology, it's like World of Warcraft. You unlock abilities and uh, you pay a bunch of money to do courses. I actually pulled up the leveling guide and Joy Jindusa, according to Tony Ortega's website, is an OT level eight. So the ability that she gained is handles the primary reason for amnesia on the whole track. Once you get here, I think the raid boss is Xenu which was the ruler of the universe like 75 million years ago, and he's going to come back with the galactic confederacy to enslave all of the universe's minds. But then L. Ron Hubbard's going to fly in on a UFO or something and save humanity. But I thought it was cool, you know? 
got a leveling guide, got abilities. Are, do any of these abilities have cooldowns? Are some of these abilities more overpowered than others? Who's responsible for nerfing and buffing different abilities? Also, by the way, to become an operating Thetan level 8, you have to pay, I think it's roughly like $380,000. Uh, she's on the front page of David Miscavige's website here. You know, the guy that's wife has just been missing and... They were the king and queen of Scientology. And then in 2005, Shelley disappeared. As preposterous and shocking as the Shelley Miscavige case may seem, making people disappear is not alien to this so-called religion. She's on the front page of that dude's website talking about how great David is. The ability to make a person feel so important and to be genuine about it is extraordinary. Even though in every documentary I've ever watched about David, they paint him in a very different light. Did David Miscavige ever beat you? Many, many, times. many, many times. And we, did you witness him beat others? Many, many, many times. I, I have seen David Miscavige beat people up ah, hundreds of times. This whole website is just a bunch of videos of Scientologists sucking off uh, David Miscavige, pretty much, talking about how great he is. <laughs> so, I don't know, dude. There's even a Tampa Bay Times article about how the Church of Scientology has taken over the real estate and the footprint of Clearwater, Florida. So this is the website, and as you scroll, it just highlights all of the real estate that Scientology started with, and then they've slowly been buying up all the property in Clearwater. And they do all of this under a redevelopment plan. And now this is just the global tax-free headquarters of the church. So why does all of this matter? Well, it really doesn't. You're, you're free to practice whatever religion you like. I just think it's funny that the Glassdoor reviews say, no, nah, this company, no, nah, no. Nah. And then they admit a little bit that they push L. Ron Hubbard. Okay, well, yeah. But then you go and you start doing research on the owners of the company, and I'm starting to believe these Glassdoor reviews. If you enjoyed the trip down the rabbit hole, do me a favor, click that sub button, click that like button if you like me calling out corporate like this. And if you have anything like this you'd like me to call out, go ahead and, uh, you know, send me an email, grindreel at gmail.com. I have Discord, Instagram, however you want to do it. Happy to take a look at it. Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. And I'll see you in the next one. Whoever the f*** you are, I'm just real. What can I tell you?